Hello folks, we're back on the four-wheel drive again this week. So today's goal is going to be getting the hydraulic pump mounted onto the engine along with building the hydraulic reservoir for the back, which I changed my plans on. So over the past week, I ended up rigging up a pulley on the end of the flywheel so that way I can drive my hydraulic pump like so over to the side. I ran a piece of threaded rod into the end of the crankshaft and came out with some bushing stock that was three-quarter OD so I can slide my pulley over it and lock that down. So I'd like to find a bolt at some point versus the three-quarter of the threaded rod, but that'll work for now. My bracket for the pump is going to end up coming across the top of the engine like so and probably end up designing it so it comes down the back and I can come off with a couple of legs from these two bolts there and there where the engine mounting plate is so I'll have to come up with a good design for that to hold everything still as for the hydraulic reservoir I am NOT going to be using this western plow reservoir anymore which was originally going to get bolted to it like so on the steering column I know this tractor is already kind of a menagerie but I don't really like the way it looks I like something a little bit more clean looking so I was rummaging around in the steel rack outside yesterday and I found a piece of 3x3 square tubing. Pretty hefty stuff, 3 16 So what I'm going to do is build a steering column and hydraulic reservoir out of this in place of this column or bracket, whatever you want to call it, that I have on here now holding the steering box. And I'll bevel the top of it and cap it so it matches the same angle as this and I can bolt my box to it. And then I can get in some weld-in port flanges offline when I order my hydraulic stuff. And all I'll have to do is just drill my holes accordingly in this, weld in the ports, and I'll have a nice hydraulic reservoir to work with. So, And of course we have to build the three-point hitch and all that fun stuff. But today's goal, at least for this video, is getting this hydraulic pump mounted and seeing about getting this reservoir built. So, let's see what we can get done. Well, here's what I've got as of right now from my hydraulic pump bracket. As you can see, I bent up some one inch flat stock and jogged it over a little bit, top and bottom for the engine mounting holes. And that way I can attach my piece of quarter inch plate to them, which I notched out accordingly around the bump in the side of the engine adapter plate. So that comes up to the top here and that allows me to run my piece of angle iron across the top of the engine where my hydraulic pump will come out the side. And as you can see, that's been notched so it sits down around the intake manifold and the shroud because I wanted to build it so that way I can still run this exhaust on it. Although the last thing I'm gonna do to this if I have time is put twin stacks on it for plow day. And of course, if I did that, I wouldn't have to worry about notching this piece, but I would like to have this muffler on there for driving through the woods because they won't be sticking up. So that leaves it so that way I can just be off of the manifold and the shroud and just be off of the underside of the exhaust at the same time. And what I'll do is I'll come off of the side of this with a bracket that attaches to my intake manifold bolt to keep everything in line like so. And then my hydraulic pump will be mounted on a bar that sticks out the side that welds onto the piece of angle iron like that. And with any luck, everything will be rigid enough to keep this thing from moving around in all those directions. So here's the upright part of the hydraulic pump bracket before I weld it up. I just wanted to pull it off to get some more vice grips onto it to hold everything in place. And as you can see, the brackets do hang over the edge of the bar and those are going to get trimmed once everything's welded up in full. And I can also trim this corner off and weld it to dress it off kind of nicely. So now we're going to take this out onto the bench, get everything tacked up, that way we can do a dry fit. Well, there you have it. Everything's just tacked up real loose like now and got it all squared off the best I could. So now we can bolt it back up to the engine and see how everything fits. Everything fit real nice with the angle iron all notched out now. The intake manifold has clearance along with the shroud and the original style muffler. And everything's bolted up in the back nice and square. So the only problems that I have now is there's still a little bit of side to side movement and up and down with the way it is mounted right now. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking a piece of quarter inch, one inch flat bar like so and fabbing that so that way it bolts onto the intake manifold bolt and it welds to the side of the piece of angle iron like so. And hopefully that'll take care of all of our movement that we have left in here. There's no other good places on this engine that I can bolt this bracket to. 
So if worse comes to worse, when I come off with the piece of flat bar on the angle iron, I can come up from the skid plate with a bracket and attach to it, which I'd rather not do because if I hit the skid plate hard enough and it moves, it's going to move my hydraulic pump. But anyways, let's make this little bracket and see what we have left for movement. Little bracket's all tacked onto the side. I had bolted it down on there and threw a piece of leather over the engine and just tacked it on quick. So that seemed to get most of the side to side and up and down motion out of it. There's still a little bit of twisting motion as expected with angle iron, I suppose. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start building the bracket that extends out the side for the hydraulic pump and get that all tacked up also and see how everything moves around. I might be able to gusset the back side of the angle iron a little bit to reduce some of the twist, but we'll have to see how that goes. And as for the top sticking up over here, everything, when this gets all welded up, I'll trim everything down nice and neat along with the side pieces here. But I'm not welding the thing completely. That way, if I have to cut something apart to adjust it, it won't be that big of a deal. So we'll start making the bracket for the hydraulic pump now. So to build this bracket for the hydraulic pump, I planned on using a piece of 2-inch wide flat bar like so, quarter inch thick. And I'm going to end up cutting it and welding it right to the side of this piece of angle iron here and coming off at a 90 degree angle and then to brace it so it's not doing this on me I was going to weld a couple of strips of quarter inch by one inch thick by one inch flat bar to the top edge of it on either side like this and stitch them down the edge and then wherever this bar ends I'll just cut everything at a nice angle and clean it up really nice like but the first thing I have to do is figure out how far out my pump is going to have to sit and I have the belt on here that I'm going to be using. So at a rough guess we're going to be sitting right around there. So this pump comes out to seven and a quarter. So I'll make the bracket eight inches long. That way it gives me a little bit of playing room. I can cut some slots in it in case I have to use a different size belt and it gives me plenty of adjustment room. I measured out the holes on the hydraulic pump bracket that's currently on it. So these are already slotted so that way I have a little bit of side to side movement. But what I do need is some back and forth that way I can put tension on the belt. So I had held this up against the engine and the bracket and pulled the belt as tight as I could. And these lines here and here is where the pump fell to, the holes on here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is using 3 8 bolts to mount it, and I'm gonna drill two 3 8 holes side by side on either side of the line, and then cut them out in the middle and connect them to make some slots. And that'll give me a little bit of playing room back and forth for my belt tension. And because I did this with the belt tight, I should be just about dead even. Worst comes to worst, I can always egg out the holes a little bit more and give myself some more slack. So now to knock out the middle piece to continue my slot. Sometimes I'll knock it out with a chisel if there isn't much left, but there's still a significant web left in the middle. 
So I'm going to go outside and burn it quick with a torch and then bring it back in and we can clean it up with the file. Now back when I made the swivel plates for these four wheel drives from the first one that I made and I built three of them, this is how I had to cut the swivel slot in every one of those plates was by drilling probably a dozen or so three eighths holes, cutting all the middle out with a torch and then spending about an hour or so with a file cleaning all the slots out because obviously enough I don't have a bridge port or any of that fancy stuff. So needless to say, I can't wait till I can find a place and <laughs> get some machine tools because it sure would make this a heck of a lot easier. That's the ticket folks. Slots came out pretty nice. That'll give us plenty of room back and forth and side to side so that we can tension up our belt and get everything squared up. I get the braces cut for the top of the bar and these are just going to keep it from flexing up and down a little bit is rather than just have a piece of flat stock there. So we're going to take these out to the bench and get everything jigged up and squared up real nice and then I can start tacking these on. It's a hideous looking thing, ain't it? Well, I got the hydraulic pump bracket tacked on to the end here and got everything squared off the best I could. So now we're ready to finally mount the thing up, put the pump on it, slap the belt around it and see if everything holds tight. Well folks, there you have it. The hydraulic plow pump is all squared away. Pretty happy with the way that it came out. I got all the ends trimmed off and everything. Everything's been welded up, deburred and grind and all that good stuff. And the plow mounted up really, the plow pump mounted up really nice. The only thing I had to go back and do was weld a piece of flat bar underneath this piece of angle iron here because I was getting a lot of flex on the angle iron with the belt tightened up. But now that I have that stitched in there, everything's, when I squeeze this, there's no more flex in the bracket because this was twisting quite a bit like that. And that'll have to that'll be able to save me from putting a bracket running from this arm down to the engine shroud. So everything worked out real slick. And of course it'll also clear the stock muffler, so I can still use that. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is extend or turn that elbow or that 45 a little bit so that way it misses the pump a little bit more when it comes out the side. So now that that's done, I can get the muffler back onto here and we can move on to building the hydraulic reservoir and mounting the steering column on it. Well folks, it's yesterday's tomorrow which would make it today and I think I have just enough time left in this video to keep it a reasonable length and build the steering column and hydraulic reservoir. So I got some steel together and I got an initial plan on what I'm going to be doing. So before we get too long in the tooth here, let's get to doing some fab work. Before I go and cut this, I'll show you what I did to measure everything out. As you can see, I have my line going around it for the cut line for the angle, so that way I can achieve the same angle that the steering box was originally mounted on on that mount. And I also figured out the cubic inches of this from this point down before we hit the bevel here. It has 68.75 cubic inches, and if you convert that over the quartz, it's going to be 1.19 quartz. So it's going to be about a one quart system, which is more than enough to run both hydraulic cylinders and the steering valve. And I had also found a female to female NPT coupler along with a pipe plug. So what I'm going to do is take and cut this at an angle and I can weld it in in this vicinity somewhere. And that'll give me a nice fill to work with to fill up the reservoir. 
I cut the angle on the top of the steering box mount so that matches the old style one. I also had cut the plate that's going to be capping it like so and I left it down just a little bit so I can weld the piece of flat bar on there in that position so that way I can catch the two studs on the top of the steering box aside from having a strap that wraps around it like the old style did. And the holes are all marked out for the flanges, the welded flanges that I still have to get. I have the suction line to the pump there along with the return and the oil fill plug up towards the top. I'd cut the little coupler that I had down so that'll mount on there real nice like. And I'm not going to cap the ends of this yet until I have those holes cut and the flanges welded in so that way I can clean out the inside of this the best I can. Since this won't have a filter on it, I'd rather get everything cleaned out the best I can before I go capping this off and sealing everything up. But that's as far as I'm going to go on this for today. Until I get my hydraulic stuff in, I have to place the order either today or tomorrow. So it'll be in in time sometime next week and I can keep plugging away at this. But for the time being, I'm going to get my battery box done underneath the seat because the battery had to get moved back. And after that's done, I'm going to start in on my three-point hitch and getting that built for the back. So I don't know how much video I'm going to do on the three-point hitch building just because as much as I enjoy doing the videos and the fab process, it does slow me down quite a bit and I really have to get cooking on this project to make Pennsylvania Plow Day. But I won't get too far ahead of myself before I check in with you folks. So anyways, there you have it. Too bad I didn't have time to redesign for a set of rear fenders. Definitely would dress it off nice with the wheel horse hood. <laughs>